All right, let's uh, let's dig into this demo reel and see what we can see. Oh, also do this. There we go. It's a little nicer. Cool. Very nice. It's good to see the uh, iAnimate game stuff churning out some some pretty good stuff here and the cool rigs and everything like that that you've got here. But um, let's just go through it one by one. I think that might be the best way to do this. So yeah, if we just start from here, we'll just isolate this shot so I don't have to keep doing it. All right. So first of all, I like what you've done here with like the nice simple lighting. You've got some some nice like plain shadows very like simple environment just looks like some stocky assets that have that you've downloaded or, or found on like the iAnimate store or whatever um so i like i like the way you set it up and i also really like the way that we're like transitioning from the name into the real like i quite like that as well oops um one thing i would say actually before we even get started on the real is it would be nice to have uh your email here you know rp at gmail whatever it is just so people can find you i'm not sure if you show oh, you show it at the end but you know it's always good because like what ha what happens a lot of the time is like people will play through these reels and then they'll just have set all the videos to loop and it's really nice if at the start and at the end you have you they don't have to go searching for this info just tiny little things like that can really help your chances um so yeah let's just start at the top of the list so specificity I like that we've got, you know, a character that sort of looks, you know, samurai-ish with the samurai sword and we've got some you know, Japanese, Asian-inspired architecture back here. But other than that, it doesn't really, like, it doesn't make sense as to why she's cutting these brown spheres, you know? Like, are they coconuts? And then, then like, the mother of all coconuts shows up. It just doesn't, like, make, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't read as, uh, as something that this person would be doing in training, you know? Like, if, if these were, like, straw dummies or something like that, and she's like cutting cutting through them. So got like a little target painted on the front. Or there are uh, um even if it's just like the I'm not sure if, if I animate has one of these, but it's like a rubber dummy that's got like a head at the top like this, and it's got a little face. You know? And then when she slices through them, they react a little bit. That that would be okay too, but just the, the fact that the spheres feel very placeholder, and it's the first shot in your reel. And so, like, if there's anything that's going to be placeholder in your first shot in your reel, I feel like it's already kind of, like, not ringing alarm bells, but it's already a little bit of a red flag. It's like, the first shot in your reel is the one that you want to have spent the most time on, is the most impressive, the one that people are going to be seeing first. If there's placeholder assets in there, it really just shows that, it shows to the person watching it that, that this person is willing to show something final without final things in it. Um... Just like, why are we here is, is kind of the first question. I'm guessing that it's training. Training is kind of the idea of this, but we need more information. We need to see either some training dummies or some explanation as to why these spheres are coming. You know, like, is there a cannon shooting her? Just questions that need to be answered. And that's what I mean by specificity. So answering questions about the purpose of the shot. Um, thing number two being silhouette. So as we track through the shot, see through here it feels like she's tensed up and not able like this is almost feels like this kind of a silhouette you know everything is tucked in in terms of like the upper body and if ever you've played tennis or any racket sport or anything to do with like swinging an object you generally want to have more space between your elbows and your body than is present here because like the minute that your elbows come in, your ability to actually swing things around, especially if you're holding something two-handed, becomes like severely um, uh, restricted. So that's, you know, like not only from a silhouette perspective, but just also from like a mechanical perspective, it would really, um, really, really help to get a little bit more, like this is all right, you know, this is okay. A little bit more space between the elbows 
I would even raise this up a little bit higher, like if we find some rare for real quick. We've got Jin from Ghost of Shishima and an actual samurai expert on the right here. Let's just go back a little bit. So see how like, it's not present in the actual animation here, but do you see how like this really beautiful straight arm is present here? Let's see if we can find some more over the head animation. It might come a little bit later. Yeah, it is. It's from a side angle. But here's kind of what we're going for in your shot as well, this sort of over the head thing. You can even see the way the spacing is working the reference really nicely here. You could push this in your own animation, but you see how quickly we get from here to here? This is like the impact point of the blade when it's traveling at the fastest. So let's take a look at your animation again. I think you've got the idea of the impact point, but I just feel like the silhouette point number two is is really like stuck within the head here. And I think partially that's also to do with like your, your moving camera. You're sort of fighting the silhouette with the moving camera and trying to keep keep um, keep a nice shape and keep a nice silhouette is really challenging when you sort of jump over to point number two. Sorry, point number four, moving camera. Cool. This is nice. I like what you're doing here. I like how we're looking at the subject. She's got a really nice line of sight. Eventually, I would bring one of these feet a little bit further back, because right now it feels like there's a little bit too much weight on this side of the... and it might just be this outfit that she's got on. But it feels like there's kind of too much uh, heaviness on this side and she's getting pulled back. So yeah, I would drag this foot back potentially here. And that'll also free up the silhouette so we see a little bit more of this leg and back leg and gets a little bit cooler, a little bit more appealing. Here again, th this is like a big issue, right, with silhouette. Be because of the way that you're spacing this ball, we get a chance to see it really nicely here and here, but the moment that she's like about to cut it, it covers her face. And if we're going to be covering someone's face, we really want to be intentional about why we're covering their face. I would probably have it just remove this pose altogether, this, you know, this entire frame, just like remove. Because you don't need it. You could just cut straight to here and you would have, you would have what you need. So yeah, and again, we're sort of, this is this is better but we're still getting a little bit lost inside of the shape of the you know what this swing is inside of the silhouette <coughs> pardon me sorry Ugh, allergies man allergies um and then just on balance we have a few frames here and this is okay to do but it just needs to be again really intentional where both feet are moving at the same time see this back foot and this front foot are both sliding so she's like lifted off which is good but let's just again go back to our reference and see if we can find any instance of, of, uh, of that happening and then I think uh, there's a point here that felt really stuck right like the hips hit a wall right here so watch the movement of the hips you can just track this little you know rope see how it stops right here and then it doesn't move or rotate or translate it just like comes up and stops so you really want to be super careful about wall hits and here, here it happens again you like drag the torso or the hips forward and they're just completely still there's no movement at all in the in the hips until you start moving again. So I'm going to add one more thing to this thing number five. Oopsie. Wall hits. And I have a feeling we're going to see more wall hits as we go. Ooh, what am I doing? As we go through. But yeah. 
um, now that I've sort of seen one of them, they're kind of all over the damn place. And we also have a little bit of the IK hands happening through here as well, right here. See how these hands right here are sort of locked in world space, but the torso is kind of moving around them. You can really see it right there as this armor guard piece shifts around. So this is okay if they are, if this force were completely immovable, like if it were a brick wall, then you would get that kind of reaction. But even then they wouldn't be completely locked in place. There'd be some pivoting happening between like where the sword is on the wall and where the hand is. There's never going to be a complete stop unless they're putting the hand on the table or on the floor or something like that. And even then <laughs> it's not a complete stop. There's like a cushion, a squish. There's like a feeling of compression as the, as the fingers spread apart. And then there's small adjustments that happen after that as well. So gemology, I love how they find experts in reaction and uh, recreate actions like marine snipers. I haven't actually seen it before. I've seen like, you know, game uh, or like videos where people react to video games, um, like as professionals, but I haven't really seen too many of theirs before. Okay. So yeah, just, just watch, watch this, you know, these like locked hands here feel, feel a little bit rough. I do like how we're animating on the face though. You know, that's really cool to see, just getting a little bit of extra personality in there. Um, and then you sort of force through the object after a little bit, which it, uh, this is where it becomes a little bit hard for balance to make sense because like you've got the hips are completely still, but the knees start rotating out this way. See that? So it's really hard. I'm wearing pajama pants, so I'm not going to stand up. <laughs> but it's really hard to stand up and move your knees without moving your hips. And typically in a movement like this, your your hips would be the thing moving first. Um, if they're going to be like leading through the action and then, and, and then the knees and the feet will follow. Yes, we have Zelda playing on the TV behind me. I have the Nintendo 64 hooked up and everything. Amazing. I got it working. I mean, well, it was always working. I just had to plug it in. So yeah, I was thinking, I have a bunch of different games over there. I was thinking during streams, I could just like put in different menu screens. Cause I really, I love the art of the menu screen. <laughs> mm. Okay. So yeah, just really be careful here, especially here as well. Speaking of feet, the, you've got a point where both the, the feet are moving at the same time. So this one's pivoting and this one's coming off the ground, which is really hard to do. And then you've got, as the foot coming forward here, this foot continues to pivot, but it doesn't pivot quickly. It pivots linearly as the foot comes forward. So, and it's also completely flat. If you try this movement of standing up, lifting, your, lifting one of your legs and then pivoting your foot while it's flat on the ground, it's almost impossible. You need to go onto the ball of your foot or onto your toe and then, and then pivot from there. And as you do that, watch what your hips are doing in reality, because odds are they'll be doing all sorts of like adjustments and wobbles and, and, you know, correcting for balance. Whereas through here, this feels very, you know, almost straight up and down. So yeah, keep your eye out for what you're doing with the knees and the feet and the hips all through this section right here, because the issue is, the core of it is, that we're forcing through this, but we're not leading with the parts that we should be leading with. It feels like all of the extremities are moving before the hips and the chest even have a chance to move. And so what would be really cool to see is this action of someone like hitting something and then moving through it. And how do they, how do they get through it? I'm sure there's like stunt people that do this sort of thing all the time. Uh, stunt pack, oh, fight, that's probably better. Feels like an old video. Oh, it is. But I've seen this before, you know, they'll like attack someone and then, you know, they'll hit them in the neck or whatever, and then they hold there for a little while and then they pull out. That, that's kind of close, but not quite what I'm looking for.
By the way, if you're looking for like cool fight reference, these stunt videos are always super good. Stunt, stunt men really know how to animate themselves to be cool and like make cool poses. Like that's their whole job. <laughs> So if, yeah, if you're going to be studying some motion, check check out these stun videos, man. They're all great. Just the, even the camera movements, like the way it's kind of handy cam and shaky. Look at how they come in and out of camera as well. Really cool stuff. Like th I feel like when you were playing it, like on the playground as a kid with sticks and stuff, this is how cool you thought you looked. <laughs> but these guys just never stopped and they just kept getting better and better. Look at that for a cool cut, the way he comes into frame. Bam, kick and then footstep in. And see how they're always framing both of the people in the action? You know, we can see both of the people and what they're doing at all times. Still waiting for the example that I'm looking for, though. Sometimes these spinny cameras get a little bit nauseating for me, but maybe that's just because I'm an old man. Kind of goofy. This is a little bit more goofy than the other one. There you go, that was the motion. I was that's the one I was looking for. Except he's, he's behind him. <laughs> See how he like gets his sword in his back right here, and then he drags it out. We can't see behind him though. This this is the this is I feel like the kind the same idea that you're going for here, but just in, in a, a different direction. But yeah, the, the point that I'm trying to make here is that this feels like it's the wrong parts of the body are moving first. That's really all I'm trying to say. Uh, and then the, I was trying to find reference, but apparently it's quite hard. We, I mean, we looked at two videos. We could look at more. But yeah, I would, I would urge you to go out and do a little bit of, of reference finding, and maybe even film your own reference for some of these parts. This, this doesn't seem like a great, like really quite like a super challenging, unless you were going for like perfect form, like technically being very correct with this stuff, then yeah, I wouldn't worry too much about yeah, about finding like the ideal reference and just filming some yourself. So yeah, I think it's a I think it's an okay first shot, but it just has it like five kind of very big issues. Um, and I didn't touch on moving camera, but even just in those stunt videos that we watched, the camera was always doing something consistent. It was either locked and sort of staying you know relatively still, or it was rotating slowly around the action. Rotating is a little bit harder to do because you need to be really present about where the, like, the people of the actor needs to be really present about where the, actor, the camera is at all times and like positioning their body so that it's always kind of in the right spot. Um, I, I think often for shots like these, especially at the level that I, I believe that you're at after seeing this first clip, is it's better to have a locked camera or it's do a very still like slow camera move with, without any you know, complicated rotations or anything like that. We talk about cameras a lot <laughs> on this, and almost always my advice is the same. If you haven't done a lot of them, and you haven't had to do them professionally, or you don't have a mentor walking you through exactly what a camera should and shouldn't be doing inside of a shot, keep the camera still. Okay. Instead of watching actual Sorbans who doesn't showcase themselves as cool, they're disciplined. Yeah. Like, it's, it's good to watch actual swordsmen, but like, 
you know, in, in the clip that we saw before, they were like filming front on, they're, they're not stuntmen, you know, they don't know, like, we go back up. Like, let's look at maybe this, for example. There's like a competition or a demonstration. And see how like, even the cameraman is just some person in the audience. You get some really nice clean shapes with their outfits, but like, they're wearing like arm guards and we're not thinking about like how cool we look to camera. Everything's sort of a little bit slow because it's a demonstration, right? You compare that to like stuff that we saw at the start here, this stunt video. Let me just skip forward a little bit. And just like how much more dynamic everything is. And like the the stuntmen, like they know how to like swing their sword so it appears as though it's moving really quickly, and it is, but they like know exactly when to like pull their the speed out of the sword so it doesn't hurt the person that they're stunting with. Or like narrowly miss them with a fast hit. Like it's very like you know, skillful stuff. Cameraman gets a little bit lost here, but I think it's okay. It's a cool shot of him spinning around. Like, just compare these two. <laughs> These are professional athletes who are like, have done it their entire lives. And these are professional, like, performers. So, yeah. I don't know, being flashy. Yeah. It's, it's totally, it's, it's very, like, it's really good to look at both, I think. Because one will show you, like, the correct way, and one will show you the cool way. And if you can find some, because like inside of the correct way, there's always some form of like groundedness, like some relatability that people who have done it before will be like, oh man, they know what they're doing. They, they, they've like studied this. They saw like, they'll see how you plant your feet a certain way and they'll see how you like hold the sword a certain way. So you'll like have that background. But when it comes to like doing cool flashy movements or like making an interesting shape with your anticipation, like stuntmen are really the place to, to go. I've, I've gushed about stuntmen enough. <laughs> okay, so we've got a mantle here with a with a weapon in hand. So again, I think you've done really nice with keeping the set. Uh, maybe we don't need all of these rocks, but the way that you've just got like a nice plain background. There's no like crazy textures or anything. There's some nice simple lighting. Again, um, and it's like kind of a unique rig. I haven't seen this rig before as well. It looks pretty cool. Um, and like a, a simple idea for the shot, you know, guy runs, mantles the wall, keeps running. The issues that I see with it are as follows. We'll, we'll try and list them out as I go. Okay. So shot two, thing, oh, thing one is cycles. We'll touch on that as we get there. Thing two. is mechanics. Oops. And thing three is we're borrowing from shot number one. But thing number three is moving camera. So as always, like we'll start in the reverse this time with moving camera. You really want to be favoring the shot and like trying to make your animation look as good as possible if you're going to be moving the camera at all. And so in this instance, we start with a character that is this big on screen. And we see this large abstract monolith looking thing in the foreground. And then there's all of these, you know, geos back here that serve no purpose. Also, they're incongruent with this object. Like if this stuff were back here and you wanted to have him vaulting over something, I would want to see him vaulting over like whatever, like one of these rocks, not, not just like standard cube. So like just a little bit of interconnectedness would be nice. Um, but yeah, with the moving camera, like there's no, we're so far away. Like he's so small at this point, the cube in the foreground is larger than he is. 
So screen space relationships between like the elements that you're showing um, are really important. Like if we're going to be highlighting the animation, we want the guy to really be, you know, let me change color. We want the guy to really be in the frame. You know, he's running. Off we go. Look at that beautiful running pose. Like we want to really be showing off the motion, getting in there, seeing what's going on. As soon as I see a shot and we're coming from this far away, I'm thinking, what are they hiding? <laughs> like, why are we so far away? Thing number two being mechanics. I think it's an okay run. I think you've got a good start here. But there's just a couple of points when we have like leg pops right here. Between here and here. The stiffness of the hips, it almost feels like the hips aren't rotating or twisting to accommodate for where the thighs are. Um, and also there's a couple of wall hits, which I thought we would see again. See how this leg rotates? You know, this is good, rotating up and it comes here and it just stays here for two frames. So you've just got like a, sh almost like a um, stillness in the run that you don't really want to feel. Like the way it just hits this wall right here, the knee. So like my, the solution here would be to just continue coming up just a little bit higher. All right. Um, it also, there are poses in here that don't quite feel run-like. <clears throat> and also if there's army people out there who are looking at this, who studied how to run with a, you know, a, a SMG or something, whatever this gun is, they're probably like saying no. <laughs> It feels like this gun shouldn't be held up by the head like this. It feels dangerous to me. I'm not a I'm not an army gun guy, I don't really know. But it feels wrong just on like first blush. So yeah, non-run poses, stuff like this. Like if I were to just like fill in this shape, you know, fill, fill. This doesn't feel like a run pose. Something that feels more like a run pose is like this, you know, this, this feels better. Still a little bit getting lost inside the silhouette here with the hand and the gun and the head. But the fact that this arm is out like this and this leg is back like this, this feels, you know, this feels good. This feels right. But yeah, mechanically, this, there's just a couple of wall hits and, and pops and things like that and, and, and shapes that you could probably improve to help the vibe of the run. And then, um, just keeping, staying on mechanics a little bit longer. I feel like I want his hand... It's, it feels it feels weird how we come, the head comes out of this run, see? How it just sort of like, clicks up right here. And then the path that it takes feels weird too, you know? Like it's coming down here. And then it just sort of goes like this. And then like juts forward at a certain point. You see that? See how it's like jutting forward. And then, so th this is where moving camera comes into it a little bit as well, but it's also kind of mechanics. So screen space for moving objects get really complicated anytime you add a moving camera. So let's just look at the screen space placement of this foot, okay? Okay, so what's really hard for the brain to pass here is that this object is moving forwards, but it's also moving backwards and the camera is moving forwards. So it almost looks like the leg comes up, stops moving in the middle of all of his force, you know, like he's kicked his leg up, stops moving really suddenly right here and then starts flying backwards. And it doesn't make any sense why. If the leg were to come and like hit the ledge, like if this leg were here on the ledge, this would make sense, you know, because we've landed on the ledge, the foot has stopped. And then maybe if the foot, if this, you know, this rear knee comes up and gets over a little bit, you can then use that to like push this foot back. But the way it just like flies up and flies back, it's kind of hard to read because of the moving camera, but something about this sort of like foot coming up 
like appearing and then just flying backwards feels kind of strange. Feels like something wrong with the mechanic. Soltex, welcome, welcome. How you doing? Nice. So, um, moving forwards, I think this is where we're going to start to talk a little bit about cycles. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to meet you. So you can kind of clearly see there's like a point right here where we blend out of the jump and back into the cycle. See, there's the cycle. Whoop, jump, blend, back into cycle. And also we can see here that the cycle... Oh, the camera stops moving as well. But the cycle has like little poppy issues in it with the head. The head sort of goes like this. It's less apparent from the front view, but when you see it from the back like this, sort of back three quarter angle, it's, uh, it's not quite right. So, and then, yeah, back, back on moving camera. It's weird how we pan out here into the void and he's just running just into the nothingness and then the camera stops. I don't know if that's supposed to happen or not. So either the camera movement needs to be stretched or you need to just find it. What I would recommend is finding a good camera angle and just hitting it from that side. So I would probably say something like what you've got here is good. You know, you get a chance to see him running towards it. You get a chance to see him running off screen. We don't need to turn and see more of this cycle. Like we've already seen the cycle twice. Okay. So th this, I think this is on the right track um but just just the blend points between the cycles having the moving camera and some of the little hitchy mechanics need to be cleaned up <laughs> don't know why i said that but let's go let's go bruh yeah and and like i said at the start this this gun being up here and so close to the head feels strange let me just again let's just do some um running with combat rifle Second shot on the reel, you really want to be making sure that it's, again, real banger. Um, and having claw hand with broken wrist is not a, is not super, super hot. Okay. Bing, uh, bing bong. Let's move on to the next one. Okay. There's a lot of this. So... Here we have guy with sword, here we have guy with sword, here we have lady with swords, here we guy with gun, here we have girl with sword. I would say we need a little bit more like variation in here. I think I think it's good that you've got some nice action stuff and some like you know traversal stuff, a little bit of a death animation. But what I would really like to see is not just quadrupeds. I'd love to see what you do did with a, a not just bot bipeds, my bad. I'd love to see what you do with you know, a tiger or a lion or a bird, something. Just to get a little bit of more like refreshment in, in the reel. And also what would you do with a still camera? Because all of these shots have moving cameras. Oh no, this one still. Okay. Um, so yeah, let's take a quick look here too. Cool, I really like this one. I think this is kind of in terms of all of the things that we've talked about, there's there's a lot here that's working for you that you don't have in the other shots. And what I really like about this shot is just how like dynamic a lot of this feels, like how cool, let me get the red one out because he's got yellow in his outfit. Just how cool like this shape, this pose, everything's like sticking out all over the place, really cool stuff. And then You've got a nice flip here where like the head becomes the fulcrum point, which is this is real, this happens for a few frames. And just the way this arm comes down here, this feels really nice. It feels, you know, almost more recent or something about this shot feels kind of a bit more pro than some of your other ones. Um, it's also a kind of novel how he's starting on his feet here. This is interesting. Um, something I would potentially look at cleaning up. I can't really tell, but this feels kind of like a weird grip 
to me. I can't see all of the fingers. Let's see if we can find another spot. Yeah, just squaring off a little bit more of this grip to have it feel a little bit more, um, you know, actually holding the sword. And then same thing with this hand. We've got some nice interesting moments right here, like this hand being splayed out and on the ground. Oops, music hit back on. Um, this is cool, but then like, oh, I think there's a bit of the start that I'm missing. Yeah, here it is. Right here, the hand sort of goes through the ground a little bit. Just watch out. Same thing here with this back foot. It would be nice to keep that toe above the ground a little bit longer we start to lose it and then there's a little bit of weirdness here with how mechanically we get from here to here like this it's cool like the slash is cool watch for silhouette right here the sword disappears inside of his arm <clears throat> and it feels a little bit just like arms out um, but yeah, mechanically, how we get this foot up and then planted, I would love to see the reference for how this works. Because um, it feels like he lands on this foot, but he doesn't. There's a space here. And then over the next few frames, the foot slowly comes down, and now you can see it's actually black dark under there. There's a champion occlusion is, is happening. So yeah, it sort of feels like it's floating for a few frames before the foot comes down. Which doesn't make any sense, because you'd need to have a really strong contact with the ground to be able to lift off and do a flip like this from a kneeling position. Alright. Um, I would also love to see a little bit more dragging of this foot. I think you've got the right idea, but just dragging it off the ground just a little bit more, this toe really would be staying behind. And then just watch the paths of things, like the core of the what you've got here is good, but just the path on this foot, if I track the foot coming up and back and over, and then it just sort of comes up out of nowhere. So instead of coming up and around, you know, a nice smooth arc, it sort of goes back and then up like this. You see that? Between here and here and here. There's like a bend in, in the shape, in the arc. And I know that there's probably like reference out there of this sort of thing happening where he like the foot comes up and then there's a little dip and then it comes up again. It just feels very squarish, sharp edged through that section. I think same thing with the front foot. Just want to be careful about. Yeah, see how through here this foot sort of slows down right here. Or it hits the ground it's almost like we're up here we're falling we're falling and then we stop falling between these two frames this foot distance maybe it's the moving camera maybe it's because i can't judge what this distance is um, between these two frames like i can't tell based on the silhouette either or the uh, yeah the silhouette what's going on exactly so yeah um Either keeping the camera still or minimizing that camera movement would be really cool. I love how it lands on the toe and then we can press down onto the foot. Really nice stuff. Maybe here to fix a little bit of this weird groin issue that's going on. Um, you could potentially rotate this hip. Rotate this hip just a little bit more so it's favoring this leg. You know, this feels okay. It could even be a little. It look. It feels like it's just getting a bit cinched, like a bit pinched in that hip. And here it feels like it's like way too stretched out. So yeah. And then at the end, it's good, but I feel like we sort of get locked on an axis a little bit, and then everything feels a little bit stiff as the, as we settle into this. So see how he sort of stops right here and he starts again right here. So 
So it's like a double, a double settle, 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 settle. See that? So it's just a matter of like making sure that we're not just moving in one axis right here at the end. We actually settle in and relax into it. And there's, you know, up and down and moving back. And also a little bit of rotation wouldn't go astray as well. It feels very like between here and here, it just feels like we're just translating the whole torso and hips back just linearly. See that? So yeah, um, you've also got a really nice chance here to do something with this arm and this hand in the settle. At the moment it's just frozen and it's inside the silhouette. What would be cool is either if we had a little bit more twist in the torso and we had a chance to bring this arm out of the silhouette, you know, like this would be really cool. Or we twisted the other way. Uh, this way my arrows around the same way no they're around the different way yep twisted around that way and had this shoulder drop down is really what i'm trying to say and then the, the uh, arm drops it down out of the silhouette this side you know you like my lovely drawing so yeah either one i would be kind of happy with whichever way you want to settle i think it's probably going to be based on like the momentum of how he's coming out of this movement so there's a lot of downwards force and this arm comes up. So yeah, my instinct would be to actually bring this shoulder down. And then also the, the sword hand gets a little lost and it just stops. See how that, see how the sword arm comes up. If I'm just tracking this sword here, stop oh, not the next frame here. It just stops and see how it's moving one to one with the body. See that the head moves down, the sword moves down. A like very hard thing to do is to like have this really locked off, especially if you've done like a flip. <laughs> like there's like, you know, you're landing in the hand like it's catching up or it's, you know, you know, trying to balance yourself a little bit, especially if you're leaned over like this. So yeah, that's that one. We're moving through them. Um, how are we going for time? We've been an hour, an hour and two minutes. <laughs> Let's take a, a brief break to look at Najim's shot. I believe. Najim? Yeah. Najim shocking on on Thursday. Cool. Okay, let me drop over to the camera angle. Okay. So what we've got is um, the difference between breakdowns and in-betweens. So let's just say Maybe it would be better if we just opened up a fresh version of the rig. Just so we're all nice and clean. Rigs, whoops. Try and do a nice practical example. So let's say we're about to like do a jump. So you've got pose A and then you've got pose B. Spine a little 
little bit. Right? The pose A and pose B. So at the moment, everything between the neutral pose and the anticipation pose is a in-between because all of these frames are just being in between. A breakdown is a describing pose. A breakdown is a describing pose that tells us how do we get from here to here. At the moment, like I said, everything is just in between. There's no description. We just go linearly every single control from here to here. If we were to add a breakdown, what we could do is we could favor the starting pose, keep the arms down, Keeps one of the arms down and bring one of the arms forward. Curl the spine back in, in anticipation and look down. And maybe we uh, go a little bit to the left. So now we have a pose that tells us how in between we get from here to here. Maybe we even favor a little bit more. Right? So the difference is this. This is now our breakdown. If I get rid of it, you can see, delete the frame, no breakdown, bring back the frame, there's the breakdown. A really good test is like the punch. The punch is a really nice way to describe how we do breakdowns. So let's open up the animation that I did. Cool. There's a punch right here, right at the start. Bam. Oh, don't crash, please. Yep. Bam. So if I were to just take all of the keys from here to here and delete everything in between, it's just like a linear movement, right? From here to here. Oh, just accidentally keyed the squares. It's fine. Without any of the breakdown poses, all we've got is in-betweens. So what what we would do if we wanted to create a breakdown is we would decide where we want to put the breakdown. Now this is the sort of next level under, under the uh, whole breakdown lesson, right? Like there's this idea in animation of timing and spacing and these things nest inside of what breakdowns are. So the timing is really important because if we were to say, you know, favor for as long as you possibly can, the lol rigs, yeah. Favor for as long as you possibly can. We're just going to use the tween machine here on the on the previous pose. You know, really long favoring on this previous pose. And we're even going to break down and antic back a little bit more on this arm. Yeah. Antic back a little bit on the chest. So now this is what our breakdown looks like. Previously, our breakdown was this. Oh, there was no breakdown. There was just nothing there. But now we've got this pose on frame 15. That is a breakdown. We're going to color it yellow. Right? So now this is here. And the difference between the motion, let me just frame up the animation so you can see. It was here, wasn't it? Eight, frame eight. The difference should be like night and day. So let's just drag this back here. So here's what it looks like without a breakdown. Okay, fine. And here's what it looks like with a breakdown. Okay. So we're really holding back for a long time on this breakdown pose. Yes? I'm just gonna feed my cat, she's screaming at me. <laughs> I'll be right back. Yes. Okay, we're back. So now you see that this, this is like a whole different animation almost. And like I was saying before, the idea with timing and spacing, if we change the timing of where this breakdown is, it will change the motion again. So let's take this breakdown and we're gonna slide it way further back at the start over here. See now it sort of feels almost like the original motion. 
let's slide it further, favoring this, you know, this pose for longer before we even hit this, you know, this impact pose. Now it's like really fast. So there's, you know, there's the two ends of the spectrum. There's the end where the, um, the breakdown is, you know, less favoring one side than it is the other. And then there's a side where the breakdown favors the anticipation pose for longer. So that's how breakdowns work. Next thing we can talk about is a little bit is, is spacing. So let's just say we've, we've decided that like, you know, this is our ideal punch breakdown. We like how it works here. All of these in-betweens look okay. There's one in-between that kind of we lose her face with though. See how she just loses the face? So this is a spacing issue. It's also a silhouette issue. But if we just bring this arm down, just for this, just for this one frame, just bring this arm down, bring this face up. Now we see we don't lose her head as much. We can even favor the breakdown just a little bit more. Now that punch is like really full on. There's not much time to settle at the end, so maybe we just add a few more frames there. Okay. And that's just with the arm. I mean, we, we sort of use the full body control, set of controls, but that's just using just the arm controls. Like, let's say we really wanted to have our breakdown here. You know, we've broken down the arm so that it's favoring the reverse pose, but what if we wanted to favor the pose B, you know, let's, let's do that. All right. So now the pose sort of, the, the animation moves through as it, as it would normally do. And we're favoring where it's going to end up. See that? So now the hip is almost like leading the motion. Hello, Stywie. Welcome, welcome. How you doing? I recognize your name. You are from Jitter's chat. <laughs> How is Jitter? How is, uh, have you spoken to him since the, the long stream? The big stream? So, yeah. Um, fiddling with where this breakdown is as well is really, you know, really important. You could say we're going to really favor back here. Now we're breaking down much earlier and we're favoring the um, favoring the start. So we get a little bit of that, what we had before, but it's kind of different, right? She has a chance to like get onto this foot before she swings forwards. All of your powers come from the hips, every martial artist instructor ever, correct? And sharks chat, but I'm doing okay. Ah, oh, yeah, good, good, good. I'm good. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm feeling energetic today. Feeling very energetic. Also, have a haircut. My beard. Feeling really, really fresh. <laughs> That's good, though. Um, so, yeah. Does that make sense, Najim and Blaze? About, uh, I'm not sure Blaze didn't ask, but Najim, does that make sense about breakdowns? This is a really long shot, by the way. Like, it's nearly a quarter of your reel. Um, so first of all... Back to what I was saying right at the start, I think a little bit of specificity would be nice here. Like, if we're training, like, well, what are we training for? Is there a reason that she's swinging these swords around? Is there should we have people like standing over here, like watching or like a judge, like, you know, like what's going on here? And then is she just swinging them or do we want to put some like target practice dummies in front of her so that when she hits them, we, we, we get to see the reaction. Um, or is she fighting creatures? Like, is there, you know, like goblins or whatever, like hanging around that she's swinging these swords at? It feels like a little bit plain right now. Um, all told. I, I think you've got the right idea with like the motion. Um, I'm just going to circle this one for later. But yeah, what, what I would really like to see is just a little bit more like, you know, why, what is this action denoting? She's got some sort of ability or some power, but it's not, it's not clear how or why. 
for what exactly this is. I do like the way that we're, you know, we're, she's like leading the camera here. Um, although she starts moving at the exact same time the camera starts moving. So what I would prefer to see here, I think is she moves a little bit off frame and then the camera has to catch up to be able to keep her in the center of the frame. So good, good start. Um, and then also these trails seem to turn on for no discernible reason. So let's just take this one as a as the sort of prime example. Right here you've got pose A to pose B to pose C. So let's just talk a little bit about why trails, motion blur, smearing, all that sort of stuff exists in the first place um, without going too much into the history of it. So anytime something moves from one place to another, it leaves, it, it, you know, it has to be traveling at a certain speed for us to be able to see it get from one place to another. Depending on how many frames it takes for us to get from here to here, will determine how quickly or how well we're able to see the motion. If it's over one frame, we don't see the motion, we just see the thing teleport across the screen. But this is also where breakdowns kind of come into it, you know, like if we favor this pose, we're easing out, or if we favor this pose, we're easing in. If it's linear like this, then it's just linear, linear motion. Um, if we have lots of drawings on one side of the equation and then we speed into this one, we're easing out. Um, but the reason that trails exist is if you've got a situation where you're favoring this drawing and then on the next drawing you're all the way over here, instead of just being all the way over there, you can add some blur or a trail or a smear to denote the fact that we're moving really quickly in, in one direction. And this is, you know, this is a holdover from uh, a couple of different things. So primarily it's like a, a, a shutter speed thing to do with the camera, um, but it's also a, a trick that animators use to be able to help cushion in to certain poses or to certain frames. I'm going to turn the music down because it's extraordinarily loud. Um, so with all of that said, if you're traveling at a constant speed, there's no real need for a constant sort of even speed. There's no real reason for why you would need a, uh, a smear or a blur or a trail like you want, like, like the one you've got here. Um, I think without it, it works just fine. And then all of a sudden it appears and it's all over where the previous drawings were before it, you know? So unless this, you know, between here and here, there was no other drawings, there was no other frames, there's no reason for this smear to exist or there's no reason for this trail to be here. It's like a, it's just, it's just there. <clears throat> Same thing with some of these other ones. The fact that we just all of a sudden turn on the trail right here, even though the blade hasn't come from that direction, feels weird. It feels like there's no reason for this smear, this, this trail to, to exist. <clears throat> Similarly, you've got some interesting artifacting going on with some of these trails. I think I, yeah, this one, right? And so this is just like the software or whatever it is that you're using to create this trail with the plugin. But because this, the angle of the sword was here and then it changes to here and then you turn on the trail, you get this like X shaped trail, which feels really weird. It feels very like almost like a weird piece of geometry, like a star geometry has appeared out of nowhere and then it lingers. And so, you know, between here and here, it might be okay to have a trail that sort of does this. And then similarly, you know, just to make sure that the eye is tracking where it's moving a trail from there to there. You know, like it's okay to have some trail happening, but this level of, you know, this amount of trail, you would expect the previous drawing to have been here, the previous frame to have been here, because there's no, 
otherwise why are we seeing it unless it's some form of magical like lingering like effect glow or something like that or the lens is just really like uh like a 90s camera lens there's no reason for it to be like lingering that long so i know I'm, i might be sounding a little bit cruel or a little bit harsh with some of this stuff but you really need to be like really careful about about the treatment of where you put these elements because they're large elements and they are used very specifically for specific things um on some positive notes though i really like what you're doing with the um the settle after each of these swings at the start here it's really nice to see how you like swing and then there's like a little bit of relaxed swing and then there's like a little bit of you know uh residual motion in in the attacks as they happen cool um i think it, it all works pretty well right up until like the core motion not not the smearing stuff it all it all is working pretty well right up until here and then it sort of starts to get a little bit a little bit crazy so the reason i say that is like i said before that this this ability doesn't read it doesn't make sense this pose like how how this is working these shapes sort of split out and i don't know okay it's hard for me to understand why and then she springs out of this one with all of this force but because there's no chance for us to read the anticipation or understand like what is happening in, in this section, the section where she springs out doesn't read, doesn't make sense. And I think that that's why I mean like this is where it starts to like kind of fall apart a little bit this shot. You've also got trail going through sword here and trail going through hand here. So just be careful about that. Um, and then this spin attack, but it comes out of nowhere, you know, like that there's not really a whole lot of anticipation for it. You know, like all through here, I would expecting, I would be expecting to see her be crouching down, getting ready to like spring out, but she's just like slowly coming up, and then all of a sudden, you know, through this motion, up like this, she just starts going this way. See that? It's like two individual distinct motions. It's like you had this idea, and then you're like, okay, now we got this idea. And then if you just track what the hips are doing. See how they're so slow through here, and then really fast. It feels almost like a pop or something. Feels like as the hips come through, I mean, going horizontally that quickly is weird. You would expect the antic to be down, and then the result to be sort of like up and diagonal. The transparency is making that pose look kind of confusing. Yeah, the, the, the trails in this, I just think you should just delete them and then like rethink, <clears throat> talk to someone who's done a lot of this stuff before about where the trail should go and how we should be applying them. Because I think they're just too much. Um, and, and then as we come out of this motion, it feels a little bit rushed. It feels a bit like we land but we don't actually land, you know, we're sort of hovering above the ground right here. And this foot doesn't ever properly contact the ground. You know? And then the transition through to here feels kind of unappealing and boxy. sort of like looking off the side um sort of bent out and the other one just sort of out doesn't doesn't read to me as like i'm about to like do my big ultimate attack okay, so i got this foot going through the ground here and this like what i would urge you to do is like pop up out of your desk pretend that you're coming out of a cartwheel spin around and do this motion and just see how it feels like pay attention to what your feet are doing Pay attention to like how your hips are moving because there's going to be all of this residual motion from this flip that you've just done pay attention to how straight your or not straight this arm is 
um, and pay attention to how, like, when you get into that sort of, you know, stabbing, more compressed pose, what happens. Because as she lands, it feels very still, you know, like there's some compression in the torso right there. But she's just, like, completely frozen here. The only thing moving is the, uh, lightning. So, you know, as you get down on one knee like this, feel what happens, you know, there's, there's probably going to be a heap of, uh, re like, residual forward motion from your torso coming down that far. And then you're going to be, have, like, leaning on an object, you know, like a broom or something. And see what happens to your other hand. What happens? It'd be really interesting to, to like, trial it and film it and, and, then, and then try to bring some of what you find into your own animation. I like the idea of what you're doing here, you know, there's like the idea of um, this reverse shape, this reverse C shape, which I think you could probably emphasize a little bit more through the line of action, really bring back the torso and then continue this line up through the arm into this C shape right here. It's nice that we're doing this, but just think Think more on, on how we're getting from here to here. <clears throat> Before, like I was talking about with breakdowns, this is like an ideal situation to like figure out where your main poses are and then put in breakdowns that make sense. It feels kind of a little bit like pose to posey through here. Cool. Um, and then again, just like powers wise, I don't know, I don't know how or why. You know, like, if you just did this without the big blue electricity, I feel like we'd have just, just as much emphasis as if you kept it in. Um, can I allow that? Oh, that's fine. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> okay. <coughs> okay. Um, also, this this foot feels a little bit broken right here. I know I'm sort of jumping around a little bit now, but yeah, th this one in particular is is good. It just has some technical issues, and specificity I think is the main thing. Um, What else is there? Uh, like I was saying before, I really like what you're doing with the residual motion on the arms through here, but the torso does feel a little bit locked. Do you see if I like just zoom in on the torso, see how it stops right here? And then it's just the hips traveling up linearly through here. There's a little bit of motion in the arms and the hands, which is good. But what I would expect to see is kind of some overlapping motion on the torso and the shoulders coming down and then the head rocking back up, you know, or rocking down, you know, this way, like, it just feels very stiff through here. And like I said, the torso just locks in. Cool. Here, I think you do a good job of making sure the torso doesn't lock. I don't know, it sort of does hit a bit of a wall. It's not too bad though, because see how the head just keeps moving? There's a little bit of extra motion on the head as it gets into the next move. It kind of gets hidden. But yeah, just, just watch out for all of those things. Okay, next shot. Okay. I think you could do with cutting this shot, um, my guy. I know someone was probably like, maybe they made they gave you the same advice that I gave you earlier of we need to see something else on the reel other than people with swords. Um, but I don't think this feels polished near near polished enough to be on the reel. Feels a bit slow, feels a bit strange. We're doing a little bit of reuse of environments and stuff, which is okay, but it doesn't make sense like ha like why we're here with this this death animation with a character that we haven't seen yet. <clears throat> and also the, the mechanics of it feel a little bit awkward. Just the way that we unfurl out of this pose into this pose feels very like pose a pose b 
and then the lift off feels also very smooth and, and gentle. So you see how like, okay, so let's just imagine we saw something that hits her here. She gets hit with a, a rock or a laser or something, right? See how she's traveling, if we just look at the head even, see how she's traveling back. linearly like the distance between all of these poses is the same if i turn on ghosting I turn on ghosting i can't turn on ghosting hang on let me uh let me do this let me just refresh Let's do six frames. So you see how, if I just zoom in here, you can see all of the different drawings that we drew right in the middle of the visor as she gets lifted up. See how the distance between all of them is the same? Maybe this one is a little bit big. But through this motion of her getting lifted off of her feet, we're just like, you know, smack bang, smooth. What I would expect to see if someone got hit by a force strong enough to send them off their feet is the first couple of frames, like, you know, these, this one here and this one here, let me just zoom back in, is the difference between here and here would be more like the difference between here and here. You would just delete all of these frames in between. Because bam, you get hit. It's like, there's a lot of force happening to be able to pull you off your feet like this. So in, in order for that force to read and to be portrayed in an animation, we need to be able to see the character go from one place to another really quickly. And also, as they get lifted up, you know, just, just not just really quickly, but they also need to leave parts of their body behind that don't weigh as much as the thing that's pulling them back. So if they got shot in the chest and their chest is flying back, I would expect to see their legs and their arms stay, <clears throat> pardon me, stay behind. So see how this this leg is still bent and this one is is up and the hands are more or more or less more or less in the same place. I would be expecting you know head is down, the arms are down like this, the feet are down. It's just like that she's just getting like ripped back, you know, like there's a bullet in here and boom, going back up like this. It's almost like you um that thing. It's like a Disney thing. Like they they get hooked off the stage. <laughs> They pull the, the, the crook and they like lift them off the stage. And as they get pulled off, their arms and stuff stay behind. It's that idea. I'm trying to think of another example, but yeah, the the, the thing that's lifting them is the, the main core of the force and then everything else is just dragging behind. So I guess what I'm trying to say here is we need a breakdown that describes that motion and we also need to get rid of all of these in-betweens because we don't need them. They're, they're slowing down the motion. Okay. And then same thing in the landing. Like if I just track the base of the silhouette before it hits the ground, as it's flying through the air, just the butt, turn ghosting on, all of these frames are the same distance apart. Right? Like look at this. The distance between here and here, the distance between here and here, we're just linearly falling to the ground. This is, this is the exact same thing as doing a bouncing ball exercise and having the ball bounce like this. Let me do it linear completely. Right? When I, when I see this motion of the character getting lifted up and flying up linearly and down linearly just like this all i see is the hips as the sphere and i see it doing this so maybe it sounds a little bit like i'm ripping into you pretty hard right here and i think maybe i am but it's very important that we remember what we learned earlier on in our fundamentals like bouncing ball <clears throat> how does the ball 
stay at the top of the arc before it comes down and what does that moment before impact look like and feel like obviously we favor the top of the drawing before it lands favoring the top and then boom land hard and as we come off the feet we really get ripped out of it uh, off the ground really hard so we're going to be favoring that one right now Bam. Maybe even faster and harder. It's just a suggestion for the hip. <clears throat> okay. And then... Right here, when we land, all of this stays the same. It's almost like you've just like taken the whole, you know, everything and just like translated it down. And then even here, and now it's just like rotating back. And then it starts unfolding a little bit here in a, in a kind of weird direction over this way. But when something is like flying down from, you know, eight feet in the air like this, and it hits the ground all the way down here, what I would expect to see is there would be this frame of before and then on the immediately on the impact frame, this, this arm would be down and this arm would be down and these legs, one of these legs would be bent and maybe the other one would be sort of out this way or maybe back up this back up still you know up and then contact because without that it doesn't feel like the body is all these different parts it just feels like a, you're dropping a block of wood on the ground I like what you're doing here with this sort of like you know hitting of the ground in the hand and this sort of flopping thing but it feels like all of your attention went to this. It also feels a bit slow. Yeah. I, I would urge you to either cut this or we need to like seriously like go deep and, and rework this one pretty hard because there's a lot of there's a lot of things mechanically that are that are happening here that really detract from the overall quality of the reel. I think you're on the right track with a lot of this stuff. It feels a lot of it feels good. It just needs a bit more specific, bit more specificity, a bit more like reason and like you know technical um, cleanup, mainly with the smears and the contacts and the um, the wall hits and stuff like that. Pluses would be like getting the shapes and things like that working. You know, like I said, with this shoulder and this hand, bringing the hand down and getting things out of the silhouette would be really cool. Um, but shots like this just really really pull down the, the overall quality, I think. <clears throat> Moving on. It's like you got two different things here almost. Yep, okay. Okay. <clears throat> so, we have army, army boy. He holds a gun and he, do, he does run. Um, I think it's a good start. There's some issues with this shoulder. It's moving a lot and it feels really disconnected from his body. It feels like this shoulder is like here, you know? It's really brought forwards and I don't I don't know why. It's not like this, this arm needs to stretch to reach this gun handle here. I would really suggest just resetting the rotations on the shoulder to bring it back up to be a little bit more square. I know that we're probably, yeah, even here you can see it's like this is the flag and it's like twisted around this way. So yeah, I really strongly, strongly urge you to reset that. Um, <clears throat> and then you've got a cycle with some variation in it, which is really nice to see. But 
what's what's detracting from it is the the variation feels very just like additive layer on top it doesn't feel like it's connected to the rest of the motion so we can see you know he's running he looks one way and then he looks the other way but there's nothing else that that is indicating that his head has moved it's just like he's also doesn't move it just stays completely completely the same and then his head just twitches one way and it twitches the other way same with the gun the gun doesn't move it's just still in the same place like if you're running and then you like glance one way the, there's like a shift that happens in the spine to accommodate the head the head moving i know the head can like just pivot on its own but if you're running <laughs> and you move your head in one direction you tend to move more than just your head all right soltex no worries man Thanks for dropping by. I appreciate you. Appreciate you. All right. <clears throat> Next. I almost feel like there's too much rotation in this particular angle on the hip. He feels really twisty in his lower body. Maybe we could tone down some of that rotation by like 20%. Um, and then next. Something about the way these feet are falling, especially in the front of uh, these two side views, this one here and this one over here, feels a little bit strange i would expect in this particular run which isn't like a full stride you wouldn't get the um you know this contact pose which you've got right here i feel like the toe would be lower and then it would contact and i think that help that would help a little bit with this there's a big spacing pop right here which is fine um like technically it's fine. I just don't think it's required for this sort of stride and this speed at which he's moving. Um, I think it's good though. This, this one really works. <clears throat> something a little bit off that I'm just not seeing here. Maybe it's something to do with the hips rotation. Uh, yeah, I think it's just the hips rotating. And then also there's a nice little bounce you've got on the torso here in relation to what the hips are doing. Um, maybe what I'm seeing is that there's not enough reaction on the head from that the head just feels very sort of still locked into that turning motion and then maybe we could turn down that bounce by you know 15 percent this feels a little bit bouncy for a dude in combat armor um and maybe as well what i'm sensing is that there's a bit of disconnect between the shoulders and the amount of motion in the torso as it turns back and forth. The shoulders feel kind of... I mean, this shoulder feels like moving too much, but this one doesn't feel like it's moving enough. It's kind of locked. I think this one's, you know, this one's working, but just needs a little bit extra. Uh, also, just watch out. This knee feels a little bit in. Right here, could probably turn it out just a touch. Same with this one, feels a little in. Okay, nice though. Go back to full screen. And then we do this. There's already like a bit of a pop here, you see that sort of here. I don't know what's going on there. I'm not sure if you like blending between two different animations. But yeah, it feels like this could be smoothed out a little bit in this part. 
and then he really snaps into the aim, which is cool. I like the idea of like snapping into the aim. And if the gun does stop completely still, that's fine. But I want to see a little bit of residual motion on like the shoulders. There's got to be something. If you're going to be like this, you know, then you really want to feel it in other places. Not everything just can't stop. Um, the right idea though. I like that sort of tactical kind of hardcore feeling to it. But yeah, it's just very still right after that. Um, and see, this feels better. Like, see how you're rotating the torso through here as he turns? This makes more sense now. There's a lot of rotation here. Something feels weird in there. Let me zoom in on it. Oh yeah, we changed from a walk, that's my uh, jog to a walk too. Go back a little bit so we capture some of that transition. Yeah, something feels weird with this transition. See how like this foot, as this foot lands, it takes a lot of frames to go from contact to the down position. You know, whereas previously we've established that like it's like one frame to go from contact to the ground. So it almost feels like a blend that's happening through here. Um, and yeah, th there's a real disconnection here between the hips rotating so intensely and the torso kind of just staying so still. Yeah, and the way that the torso engages through this blend, see how it stops and then linearly rotates. I like the glancing, but you could definitely maybe lead lead with the head just, just a little bit. Oh, looks like you are actually leading with the head through here. Maybe the other thing as well is he could be lower. This particular stance feels just a little high. What if he was just a little bit lower? Got a little bit more bend in these knees. Just a touch. Yeah, do you see how like bouncy he goes and then stops bouncing like immediately into this, this walk? We gun running. We're doing a lot of gun running tonight. Yeah, it's like we lose all the bounce in the hips. It just, and then it changes to like this hot feeling. That that transition really needs to be ironed out. I don't, I don't know what the answer is there. I, again, I think it's probably just studying some more reference and taking a look at how, how to get from like this jog into this walk. Okay. And then the last shot. How you doing, Jetto? You good? Had a good day? We do a kill on this man. Okay. Look at and sweating. Is it hot in your house? Okay. So I think this is good. However, our friend in the foreground, he feels very angled very angled and i think it's just the dutch like if you're doing a tilt on the camera that's definitely contributing to it but he feels very forwards he also feels like like he needs a little bit extra polish he just very you know straight linear walking forwards the way that footfall happens looking down here right now see how it just like really quickly shoots forwards Shook. um also just framing wise the character being up here 
is neat. I like how you've got, you know, kind of a strange camera angle here. I would suggest if you cut this into thirds, if you got a ruler and did it properly, she would probably end up here or here. You know, either right on this intersection between these lines or just nesting in the top part. She feels a little bit out of frame here and potentially like if you had, you know, cinemascope or whatever, she would be cut off by the bars. Um, the black bars at the top and the bottom. So yeah, and, and same thing for him. He feels kind of a little bit out in the middle of nowhere with the rule of thirds. If we can get him back here a little bit, I feel like that would be nicer. And then you've got a nice opposing, you know, the two opposing intersections of the top right and the bottom left. That'll really work in your favor. Um, this jump is cool. I like how she comes out of frame and then the camera starts to follow her, like we, we sort of hinted at doing before. However, she doesn't really feel like she anticipates before she jumps. She just sort of slowly comes up and then all of a sudden there's all this energy and she's springing. Just straight springing. You know? Would love to see a little bit of, you know, quick down and then up. Um, also, this feels very square to me. You know? There's no twist in the torso, there's no twist in the hips. This feels, you know, like this. I would what I would sort of really urge is that, you know, on this up pose, as we're springing up out of it, also she feels like she sort of stops as soon as she starts going up. There's this moment right here where she's in the same screen space for like quite a few frames. It's almost like you're afraid of losing her to the top of frame. Um, but what I would really urge is to really push this shoulder up and twist this torso. And then as a result, we're going to trail behind more. Basically, we just want to get more of a nice, clean line of action through here. Bring this arm down. We might lose where the dagger is, but depending on how you end up framing it, it might not be so bad. And then this twist happens. The problem with the twist is it doesn't feel like she started out doing a twist. It feels like she's like flying through the air and then all of a sudden she starts twisting. I like what we're doing through here. I think this is a really cool pose. This is really cool. I love how the sword on the back is going this way. Really nice. They twisting. And through here, I think this is cool too. It'd be nice to get this leg a little lower. And get that butt sort of a little bit more flat feeling through there. And then maybe even if we can look down I know it might be hard, but having this head rotated a little bit more down. It doesn't feel like we're leaving the arm up here. It feels like we're trying to fit this element in frame so that we can read that it's a knife that's coming down. I think all of that could be solved just by keeping the camera a little bit higher, a little bit longer so that we get to see up here. That way you'd be able to bring this arm up and have this arm, you know, doing its thing. Just drawing an alternative suggestion here. Bring that knee up even further. I like how this leg is coming straight down. If we have this arm here, it gives us a bit of reason to like come down and have this sort of like a two opposing forces. Whereas having this arm out feels again quite square, you know, boxy. You know, this, this angle doesn't feel like we're about to do a stab. This feels very, like, again, very square. And then, so when we do make contact, I like what we're doing here. I really like what we're doing here. See how much we're twisting? It's almost like the, as the weapon comes into the back of the head, the, the arm and the torso is staying behind, which is a really cool idea. And how much we're stretching on this leg very nice this feels like a well thought out pose well nice nice job and then we come down i feel like it's all very quick 
what would be nice is to sort of hang here for just a little longer, you know, like this pose is probably okay, but if his head was still up here and her arm was still up here, head here, sort of still collapsing down this way, you know, and leave the rest of this as is. Maybe this arm can stay up a little bit higher too, but leave the rest of it as is. That gives us just a little bit of hang time. Maybe even another frame of her like, you know, with the thing in the back of his head and he's just hanging there, hanging there. We're like favoring on that impact pose and then it lands. It's like a sticky timing thing. Because right now it just feels like we woof straight through. You know, we almost, we almost lose it because it's so fast. I do like this. <laughs> Right. And the way that his legs fold out from under him, that's really nice. Dead ass. Um, there is a little bit of flick here on the arm that feels kind of weird. So see how this hand is here and then it comes down here and then it comes back up there really quick. Between these two frames, the hand. So when we play back at speed, we just turn off the drawings. If you just watch that hand, it feels like it goes floop. See that? Um, but yeah, the, after the impact, there's a nice sense of connectedness as she lifts up and the hips sort of come forward. She plants off to the side. Very nice. She feels a little lost through here. Also, the hair just stops. What is going on with this hair? Hold on. This flickers for like a frame or something. I don't know if there's like a simulation being run on the hair, but something needs to be looked at there. Um, yeah, she feels a little bit kind of... Something about this, what am I seeing? I'm getting determined, feeling that determined kind of vibe, but maybe it's th that there's a bit too much of this sort of like sneer going on. So maybe what I would really like to see is just, you know, relax up in here a little bit more. This, the way the, the, the lips are so high, we could bring them lower. Really flatten this down a little bit more. The nose would also be lower. We'll do a little bit of this, you know, lower lid being up high thing. Um, trying to work out how to get out of here neatly. Because there's something going on with when she pulls the thing out, it feels kind of weird the way the face juts forward there. I'm not sure if I'm seeing things though. I think maybe it's just the face gets very still through here. You know, like we hit this pose and then, with, you know, we're just locked in this face face pose. You know, maybe as she pulls it out, there's like a moment when she like crunches her eyes a little bit more or blinks when, when it comes out. There's that sort of like instinctive blink that you get. Um, I think that might help. So yeah, that's it. <clears throat> That was two and a half hours of real review. <laughs> God damn. We left a lot of drawings as well. I know my drawings tend to not really make sense unless you're like watching the video back, so I'll send you the VOD so you can you can check it out. Um, but yeah, again, overall, I think uh, I think you've got a good start here. There's there's a couple of pieces that I think you could probably get rid of or rethink and repolish. Um, you know, this one I think you can get rid of. I think this one we can reorder. This one's a great ending shot. And it's just this first shot that I think, once you polish up some of the things that I mentioned, which are all here, specificity, specificity silhouette, balance, moving camera, and wall hits, wall smacks, and then you'll then you'll be in the clear with getting this. It's just, you know, this moment here when the hips stop and all of the other body parts are moving. Now that you look at it in isolation, it's really clear. Um, so yeah, making sure this first shot 
Potentially I would even put this shot right at the start and then this shot right at the end. Because the first shot's the more important one. Capiche? All right. Well, thank you, Ricardo, for submitting that on Twitter. And I, I hope I, I wasn't too harsh. There was a, a spot in there when I was grilling you on this one and a spot back here when we, when I was grilling you on these smears or on these trails. But it's all it's all in the name of, uh, of improving and... Uh, getting you uh getting you where you need to be so yeah we're gonna leave it there let's do a raid